Today's video, I'm going to be speaking to Rob Watson, my Alba Rosa teammate and strength and conditioning coach. I'm going to be asking him about why strength and conditioning is important for endurance athletes and in particular, the cyclists. So Rob, what is strength and conditioning and why do you need to do it? So strength and conditioning is basically a, it's a way of conditioning, it's basically a way of conditioning yourself to perform more effectively within your sport. Um, a lot of people tend to lean towards most the strength side of things and, and think that it's all about lifting weights. It generally isn't. There's, a, there's definitely a balance between specific conditioning for your sport and your physical activity and how strength can benefit that. So it's, it's definitely a 50-50 split between the two. Um, the idea is behind it is essentially utilizing all the tools in terms of physical development in order to achieve your outcomes within your sport. And what are the benefits for cyclists? For The, ben the benefits for cycling essentially are there's quite a lot so it's not just yeah. a simple case of getting stronger muscles it is that but it's basically how those stronger muscles affect your performance on the bike so an example would be um the adaptation of your fast twitch muscle fibers so there's two types of muscle fibers generally slow twitch and fast twitch is how they're known um now your fast twitch has tends to have two different types which are type 2a and type 2x type 2x are the really really fast ones so they're the ones which you say bolts will have um Chris Hoy will have for the sprint activities, for example. So it's really, really fast. That that's what creates the power and the speed of your movement. And 2A is a slightly less quick, but they're still quick, but they are better at fatigue resistance. So they're much, much better for cycling. Um, and you sprint cyclists on the road, for example, Gripples, Kittles, Cavendishes will have a good amount of fast, fast twitch type 2A fibers because they're more fatigue resistant. So they can do 200K and still sprint at the end and sprint very fast. So for you, generally your average cyclist, what happens is when you adapt and do strength training, your type 2A fibers will become more predominant and the type 2X fibers kind of disappear a little bit unless you train that specifically, um, which is kind of different kettle of fish. But if you're looking at the key gains from strength, it's essentially more fatigue resistant, fast, fast twitch fibers. That then ties into you undertaking activity and undertaking a session at a low intensity so what that will do is because your fast twitch fibers are stronger and form more fatigue resistant and because your slow twitch fibers will also gain a benefit from the resistance training what they'll do is they'll recruit the fast twitch fibers at a later stage during your ride so let's say you're doing a four-hour ride you will be fatiguing those fibers less earlier on in the ride so your aerobic ride will predominantly become more aerobic Whereas somebody who is not as fit will go out and do a long ride of four hours and they'll be, be, be more fatigued at the end than somebody who's fitter. And that's because they've been recruiting throughout that more fast twitch muscle fibers than the, the faster person or the fitter person, so to speak, or the stronger person. Um, it's not quite as simple as that because you do recruit all muscle fibers all the time to do everything, but it's, it's kind of on a sliding scale of, of what you recruit for, for how much you need to uh, produce and what, you, what performance you need to produce. And for people who, like myself, uh, are not elite athletes, where should I start when it comes to strength and conditioning? Strength and conditioning, you need somebody to tell you what to do and to coach you the movements, especially. Um, it's quite a key thing to perform the movements effectively. I think a lot of people could kind of go online and find a strength training program, but there's quite a risk involved in terms of lifting heavy weights, quite simply, and specifically for endurance athletes who've not done a particular amount of resistance training or core training um if you're following a generic program and you're they're, they're asking you to sort of load up with a six rep maximum there's a lot of weaknesses there that are in a cyclist performance and in their bodies which will raise the risk of being injured um, a, a key thing is cyclists tend to have a lot of low back issues or weaknesses in the low back because it's flecked quite a lot of the time um, and day to day the majority of people sit in front of a laptop for their job or generally seated position, which again causes tight hip flexors, causes tight hamstrings, causes again weaknesses in the low back. Now, if that person picks something up and wants to do the strength and conditioning for, to improve their sport, brilliant, but it's, it's addressing potential weaknesses before they get to a point where there's going to become serious issues. 
So I've just started working with Rob and he's put a plan together for me uh, for the next four weeks. Um, even though gyms are closed, I'm gonna be doing lots of exercises three times a week at home. So body weight, squats and single leg squats, lunges, those kind of things. Just kind of getting me ready for when gyms reopen in December. Um, also got a plan to put out some more videos with Rob um, where he can kind of give his tips for kind of people's specific goals. So tips of people who are trying to improve their sprint or tips of people who are trying to improve their, improve their FTP and what kind of exercises they should be doing. But as he said in the video, really, if you're going into be doing strength and conditioning, um, you should probably seek out an expert's advice before undertaking any strength and conditioning. Um, especially if you're going into a gym and lifting heavy weights, uh, you want to know that you're doing it properly and correctly. That's it for today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you next time.